The Charter Financial Analysts, in partnership with the Institute of Directors, hosted a conference on corporate governance and financial quality reporting in Lagos, Nigeria. He had as keynote speaker Mr. Paul Smith, the president of the CFA Institute Global, who shared his perspective on why trust matters in the Nigerian financial services industry. Why does trust matter? Uh, I, think, I think really the answer to that is, is a very simple and short one. Uh, the financial services industry and the investment management industry is, is founded on trust. If you think about what we do, um, we take people's money and we manage it on their behalf. And uh, they give us money, we give them investment ideas. There is nothing that is more fundamental to that contract than trust. So I think uh, trust for us is an absolutely core topic of importance when you think about our industry. The other thought I'd like to leave you today is that for your businesses, uh, for those of you who run financial services businesses, trust is at the very center of building a sustainable business going forward. And I think this moment in time, uh, as the generations change, uh, that has never been more true. It's not just about whether you can pick stocks or whether you can pick the right bonds. It's about how do you create a bond of trust with your client so that they can rely on your uh, advice and through that reliance on your advice, um, manage their money sensibly, whether that's uh, taking uh, the appropriate amount of risk or uh, 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 really thinking forward about what their future aspirations are. Without that trust, that contract can't work properly. And I think really also, um, I, I love this word profession, uh, which is in our mission statement twice there. And again, when you think about profession, uh, I'd really, I, I really like to sort of um, ponder what that word really means. And it's a, it's a much abused word. People self-declare themselves to be professionals. And if you really sort of pick apart, well, what is a profession? What lies at the heart of professionalism? It's one very simple construct, really, which is at the heart of professionalism is service to other people. Because a profession is not self-declared. A profession is something that society invests you with. It's not something that you yourself can say, I am a professional. A professional is a contract between society and the provider where the provider is doing something that society wants. And so in return for that, what the society does, what society does is it builds a protective fence around that profession, typically through licensing. And so the most obvious one to think about is doctors in that regard. Not everybody can hang their shingle up and call themselves a doctor. You have to be licensed by the medical council, and I'm sure you have a very good one here in Nigeria. And until you qualify as a doctor, um, on uh, a national level, you can't call yourself a doctor. And why? Because doctors do something that society needs, and in return for that, society protects them. The challenge with the financial services industry, frankly, is in most countries in the world, we do not enjoy that social license. In most countries around the world, people who work in banks and investment management industries don't need a license to operate in, in a, on a personal level. They may do on a corporate level, but not on a personal level. And that really says everything that you need to know about the value that society places in what we do for a living. And I think that's a very important lesson that we should take into our hearts as financial services professionals. If we cannot do a better job of proving out to society why it is that they should care about us, ultimately, we'll have a very short and unsustainable future going forward. We may have some short-term advantage, but long-term, really, we're doomed to over-regulation and inconsequence. And so I take that, this, this mission very, very seriously indeed. And the way that I interpret it on behalf of the investment management industry is to say that what we need to do is to become a profession. I don't believe we are there yet. I think we need to complete that journey to professionalism. And the most important task we can do to complete that journey is being a lot louder and a lot prouder about speaking about the importance of investment management to the world. 
And I find that very easy here in Nigeria and in other developing countries to talk about that because it is obvious. It's obvious to all Nigerians that without an ethical, well-trained investment management industry, this country will not achieve its potential. And that's a very simple, um, simple thing to talk about in Nigeria. In the US, in the UK, it's, it's become a very cloudy conversation. People don't really understand what the financial services industry does, what we contribute to society. So I think we need to be a lot more, uh, a lot more vocal about the value that we bring, the fact that roads don't get built, hospitals don't get built, savings don't get managed properly, people don't retire comfortably, uh, people can't put their kids through school, unless you have a functioning financial system founded on good investment management professionals. And all of that is based on trust. The event featured several panel sessions discussing the issues of trust, nexus between corporate governance and financial reporting quality, and the investor's perspective on corporate governance. Highlight of the event was the launch of the Business Network on Ethics and Integrity for Nigeria. On behalf of the Institute of Directors, it's my pleasure to launch the BNEI, Business Network Integrity and Ethics. Ethics and Integrity, Nigeria for you here. Nigeria needs more corporate governance, more ethical companies. Uh, it needs people to commit to this initiative so that we can show uh, the way forward. The President of Institute of Directors for Nigeria, Alaji Mohamed Ahmed Rufai, Mr. Paul Smith, President CFA Global, and Mr. Banji Feintola, President CFA Society Nigeria, speak further on the collaboration and the launch of the BNEI. BNEI has been established today to promote the issues of business ethics, integrity, in terms of what is happening in this country both in large corporates and in small and medium businesses. So BNI has been established today, and all organizations that are in this country are amenable to join BNI. The idea is for you to be able to understand that you must develop reputation if you have a business. If you have no reputation in terms of how you do your business, obviously it will run away from you, clearly. Governance is very clear, very vital. If Nigeria doesn't govern very well, there will be no attraction for investments. In, in your own very corporate body, if you don't govern very well, you won't be able to attract investments. Because the reputation of that institution will go away, obviously, and the profit of that company would gradually win. So the idea, actually, is to bring in corporate bodies that will come together, try to see how they can join themselves and fight anti-corruption issues, okay? And fight also against an ethical practices, both in the private and public sector. And that's what we read today, because the general attitude or thinking has been that corruption is only in the public sector. But the truth is, there's always a handshake between the private and public sector. And in most cases, private sector encourages and incentivizes what's happening. So by bringing uh, these bodies together and creating a BNI, which is a business network for integrity and ethics in this country today, hopefully we'll be able to fight anti-corruption, fight on ethical practices become more responsible, develop integrity in businesses. Corporate governance is one of the things that holds Nigerian business back. Uh, that without trust in uh, institutions, without trust in companies, people don't invest. People don't invest for the long term. And what a developing country needs above all else is long-term capital. You need to be able to plan your infrastructure, uh, your educational systems. Uh, all of these things are long-term investments for Nigerians' future. Uh, and if they're not founded upon trust and corporate governance, then ultimately you won't attract the capital that you need and the capital that you do attract will be at too high a price for you to be able to afford to pay. So corporate governance and trust are absolutely essential parts of Nigeria's infrastructure. We want to leave the capital market, the investment industry better than we met it so that when we're handing it over to the future generation, you know, they will look back and say, yes, indeed, some people put in a lot of energy and efforts to get the system to where you know it would be at that time so that's primarily the driver and that's what motivates us as CFA Society in Nigeria um, we have this partnership with the Institute of Director Center for Corporate Governance which like I said we signed on the 15th of February um, this year and underpinning that relationship is issues around governance how do we improve corporate governance in companies in our market because ultimately at the end of the day we need investors to be protected 
because investors are the people who put their money at work in the financial system. If we're not protecting their interest, then the issue of trust becomes a problem. And like you heard at all the panels today, trust is a bedrock of the financial system. Once it's broken, it's very hard for us to win that trust. So as an investment management industry, we owe that duty. It's a fiduciary duty, and um, we are drawing awareness at CFA Society to, to that. With the alliance between the IOD, Center for Corporate Governance, and the CFA Society, it is expected that trust, credibility, and professionalism will be entrenched across the financial services industry and business environment to position Nigeria as a key investment destination of choice in the globe.